Well, welcome back to Mystic and the Nerd. Once again, back with the Jesse DeCourcy, who is now a published author. How are you doing, Jess? I'm doing awesome. Doing awesome today. Excited for this conversation. You really threw me for another loop this week. Uh, so I'm excited <laughs> to see where this one's going to lead in all things Mystic and Nerd. How are you doing today, Matt? How's summer in Australia? <laughs> Well, up until today, it's been hot, hot and humid. It's probably still humid, but uh, today we've got rain, so it's nice. It's a nice change for us. Sid Sydney summers are hot and humid, so it's nice to have a, a cooler day every now and then. It's kind of how we're rolling today. Hot and humid. Okay, can you see outside my window right there? I see green grass. Green grass in January. This is... Probably why I'm smiling today. I know it's I know it's probably bad because it's not supposed to be happening here. We I can't remember a time in my life where I've seen green grass in January, but ah, it feels good. Not gonna lie. Good day. Well, tell <laughs> tell everyone <laughs> what it's like to be a published author. I know you just deflect us straight off that back onto a <laughs> no. topic, but uh... under the weather, it's my. <laughs> Safe. I'm Midwestern. <laughs> this is what we do. Ah, published author. How about I, I? I'll say something, but then I'll deflect over to the other published author in the room <laughs> <laughs> to ask you another question. Yes. Go. <laughs> yep. Um, what can I say about it? We were just chatting a little. How incredible it is to see people with your book pop up all over the world and, and to start getting some feedback is just a really incredible place to sit in. So yeah. it's not so much about the being a published author. It's finally being able to share a little more of my story. And that's just such a, a gift that feels like I, I continue to open up every day. Yeah. It's been wonderful to watch uh, a community like Greater Things, people all popping up on Facebook and social media with the photos in their hands of this book that they, they now hold. And as an author, when you start seeing that, there's something, it's nearly priceless because it's something that's been inside of your spirit for the longest time. And now that enormous... Um, risk moment that vulnerable moment that place where you step out and go take a really deep breath and let's just see what what flows on back it it's extraordinary to watch then um not just photos but comments are coming from people who are going okay you're asking some of the questions i've been asking and i want to know more that's the sort of responses I've been enjoying getting from my writing as well. And yeah. uh, having chatted with you on a few times now, it's been some of the things that have been flowing back into your world. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, let me see if I could tie this together beautifully to a good segue of what we're talking about today. <laughs> Will you let me run away from this? Yeah. No, thank you. We can always come back. We can. I'm <laughs> sure we will. The mystery. So we were just chatting a little of that, the mystery of the story, because mm. of this question that you were floating around to me. And don't you think a lot of these conversations we have as the mystic and nerd really do come from the way that we're processing our own life and journey and story. And this is part of what we're writing about and sharing and part of that flow on that's coming back to us. And I love this little thought around the power of our story when we release it. It's just that hold, hold your breath moment because you are revealing something of yourself that you haven't before, or maybe you have in pieces, but maybe just not in this way where you've been able to process it in this kind of conversation that you've written out and to see how that impacts people or to see what that sparks in other people that becomes this exchange where this word mystery becomes a really relational piece and really expansive piece of 
going deeper and really starting to know and see each other more clearly or know pieces of each other that maybe we didn't. And like you're doing just really creatively in this in this writing that you're doing in Three Trees and Three Floods and other incredible things that you're working on. Maybe even yesterday. And I may have even seen a couple of these new stories that you're putting together. Uh, I can see that unfolding of someone I know, but what, being able to be allowed into that journey through your writing to go deeper into your heart, I think is a, just a really special way that we get to communicate and come together, especially in a community. Yeah, I think so too. And I think part of what we're talking today, you know, if we can even uh, flesh out the verses that we're looking at in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where it talks about God as a mystery and that he's giving us wisdom into the mystery. Uh, a few weeks ago, I saw a uh, one of the me a meme on, I think it was on Instagram or something like that. It said, why would I believe in a mysterious God? Like, I don't want to have relationships with people that are mysterious because they are people that I can't, I can't connect to. I, I can't understand. They are, they are mystery. And that really spoke to me. It really spoke into my spirit to go, is God a mystery? And that's the essence of the question. And I know that when I dropped that on you this past week, um, you had a whole bunch to say. <laughs> Do you want to divulge like where <laughs> and how we got to this point? Yes. I, I think this is great. I can't wait to see what people will think when they uh, jump in this conversation with us because it probably much like me, I think we've been really comfortable in believing and holding to this idea that God is mysterious. There's so much of God that we don't know. So when I get this thought sent my way from the mystic uh, and asking this question of why do we say that God is mysterious? And my response was simple and firm. <laughs> <laughs> because he is <laughs> like where's the conversation he's very mysterious and then slowly we started pulling back layers as I was wrestling with all the places that I would say God's mysterious for several days I sat in different ways that I would look or maybe word or consider God being mysterious in these different plans in my life ways that he's Conce or yeah, concealed things and not revealed the full picture of things. And you just kept coming back on, under these really relational concepts. But essentially what was happening, I was really still comfortable holding on to the mystery of God and his knowledge. And you had to keep saying, you're coming at this with the knowledge of God. I'm coming at it with love. So maybe just start even in that space of what was going through your mind, because as I was using that as my lens and my filter, I I started coming into agreement with you. <laughs> <laughs> we just note that down, screenshot it, and hold on to that for all eternity. Um, so I, I've literally said God is a mystery before I've preached about it. I've taught about it because, again, the Bible speaks about, Paul talks about the, the mysteries of God. Jesus says to his disciples, you've been given permission to understand the mysteries of God. And I love that verse, Jess. I just love the the part, the place where Jesus is like, I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to show you something of the kingdom of God that others have seen as a mystery, but you're going to see it as plain as day. And I think that is something that's so beautiful in a place of relationship that it needs more time to be sewn into. I don't know how you feel about that. I think you're right. I think a lot of us can relate to that. <laughs> I think the only thought that I keep coming back to is, I guess, could we distinguish this place of mystery, like we were seeing in a relationship, when love is present, can there still be mystery present? Even if we've been given all the, the ability through the spirit in us and the mind of Christ that we can argue when we're looking through the scripture today, is there still a place where the mystery is? Good. 
And the answer is yes. But it's in, the, to me, the mystery is found in the story. The disciples were invited into a conversation with Jesus that was relational. It was never, ever at that place of, I've got a 10 great um, laws I want to give to you. As long as you do these 10 great laws, we're going to go for it. It was in a place of relationship. And so even when the things that they didn't understand, so the parable of the sower, um, Peter comes along and goes, bro, don't understand it. I understand about the whole thing about throwing seed into ground. And I understand when it goes on the rocky ground and into thorny ground and into fertile ground, get that 100%. But he's like, I don't understand how it connects to the place of the kingdom of God that you're talking about. It's that relational place of sitting in that and understanding it. And so Jesus then unpacks it in a very relational way way and he invites them in effectively put their own hands in the ground and go let's just have a look at this and see what it looks like let's see those that that they take it for a little bit and then it dies or something bad happens in their life and all of a sudden because something bad happens their faith disappears but then there's this fertile ground that we're actually sowing into that fertile ground for me that's not theology that's relationship that's not understanding how God operates. That's understanding how I connect with the Father God. And so the mystery then for me gets taken out of what I know and what I can uh, collectively understand in uh, my finite way of thinking and gets put into the place of relationship where I can actually be with one who I can ask the questions of. And so what Jesus is effectively doing, and I think the book of Matthew is so powerful in this, he just gives, he just brings all these Old Testament passages. And he says, well, back there it was written. Back there it was written. Back there it was written. And right here is now is where it is expressed. And the disciples had the joy in the moment of seeing the mystery of the past, the mystery of the prophets, like Ezekiel's prophecy jest, like, You've got to be mystic and then some to get your brain around what that looks like. And then here in that space, Jesus is like, and here is how this thing starts moving. This is how this thing happens right here amongst us. Well, I loved what you said to me earlier when we were chatting through this. You said, I guess I wrote out the question, what's the risk of the mystery? I think what you've just said is the, the way that it's good way that we it's there and then it's just an unfolding of the story that God is revealing and and putting together there's a mystery in the story of this growing relationship and God's bigger story but I like what you said here if we say God is mysterious we're running the risk of making him unobtainable so we were going back and forth because I was arguing really wanting to hold on to the mystery because I was taking that in the sense of, well, if we're saying he's not mysterious, then we're making this case that we know everything there is to know about God. And I don't like, there's so much more I want to learn and lean into, but that wasn't what you were saying. So we were just kind of un unwinding that a little bit. So where does that come from with making him unatta unattainable for you? Well, if I can take it back to walk with me, it's a new classic that's come out. <laughs> written by the Jesse de Corsi. <laughs> Inside of that book is a bunch of story. And it goes from your early days uh, to married days to Bible college days to children days and all that sort of stuff. There's so much of your story in it, but it's literally 160, 170 pages long. The story of Jesse de Corsi is millions of pages long. And so for a person who is curious about the story, they're they're looking to get involved with the mystery of what they don't know. Because what people don't know, they'll often make up. And so they'll, they might read your story and they go, oh, Jesse did this. Jesse did that. Jesse might have done none of that. <laughs> Absolutely zero of that. Or she might have. That's the mystery. And so for me, when I'm reading a story, if I have a relationship with the person, I can sit down with them and go, can you explain that key relationship in your life? that was really challenging that you shared about inside of your book. Can you help me understand how this happened or what happened in your world so that you came to this conclusion about God or this conclusion about, about church? What's happening is the story is now becoming, or the mystery is now becoming uh, clearer and clearer for me. The greater I get to know you, the more that the story then comes out. Because for me, the story is not just a series of events. 
The story is about the character of the person that you're actually sitting with. And the character of the person, that's where the mystery lies. Mm. How does a person operate when there's a lot of stress? How does a person operate if there's fear? How does a person operate when they've, when they've been loved extraordinarily well? Each of those things are, are mysterious before you get there because you can't understand, you can't know until you're in that place of connection and relationship. So for me, the whole thing with God, to call him a mystery and leave him in the place of mystery means I, I'm no longer curious about his story. Now, the Bible has been given to us as thousands of years of his story, but we all know they are short stories of a very large story. And each character in there, they've got a story of their own. And so, again, the mystery can be seen in going, well, I don't know why God did that. I don't know why God did this. I don't know why this has actually happened in my life. But this, for me, is the place of relationship where I can start asking those questions, where I can come into that place where the mysteries of heaven are being revealed in those words of Jesus. Now, Jesus used parables to do that, which one of the reasons why, for me, uh, the parable of the eagle, three trees, mm -hmm. is so key and so powerful in my own journey um, in my relationship with God. It may not work for everybody, and that that's okay. But this is the place where, for me, I've gotten curious about the mystery, but I've started with the character and got invested in the character of God. And this is where I couldn't agree more. <laughs> it's like, I, I guess if we look at mystery in that place, there's mystery, but mystery becomes an invitation to more. But if we allow that invitation or if we allow the mystery to become this unobtainable space in the relationship I think that's where we miss out and I think that's why it's important maybe to look at scripture today just like you said with first Corinthians to see really what this word mystery is as Paul is using it and where that invitation is with with God and that mind of Christ that we've be, been given to go into this invitation this deeper place with him so when i said all right in the beginning of this uh back and forth as i was trying to argue my case i said where show me in the bible where you're coming at with this and this was one of the first places that you uh threw at me and you were looking more at the end of chapter two i think but what is it about first corinthians for you that really tackles this well, there's a lot about the Corinthian church that I think is really helpful for us to understand the culture and the context too, because often we can read a, a letter to a church or we can take a verse out of that letter, but not understand the church that he's actually speaking into. And anyone who's read 1 Corinthians will see that this is a dysfunctional bunch of humans that are trying to work their way in the first century of understanding something of how does this love thing work? What, how does the law fit into this? Does it fit into Do it? Do we just eject that altogether? There's so much in side of it if you go further into one corinthians you got a, a guy sleeping with his mother-in-law and it's like this whoa hang on a second there's a whole bunch of moral problems inside of this world but paul starts this letter in this one corinthians 2 by inviting them to understand what christ has done for them and sometimes we think that's the mystery of what christ has done but jesus is like how much plainer could i have made it mm -hmm. i came i died i resurrected it's happened and there was a reason behind doing it. And so here in um, in the scripture, Paul is saying, uh, you, have, you have the mind of Christ. You have it. Not that you will, not that you might, not that you could, not if you behave really, really well, you'll get it. You have been given the mind of Christ. Well, what does that mean? Well, again, the Bible is sharing with us that we are able to understand the thoughts of God. Now, in Isaiah 55, it says, who can understand the thoughts of God? Uh, his ways are higher and his thoughts are, are wiser. Mm -hmm. And so often when I'm teaching from this passage, I'm saying, well, here's Paul saying that we have the mind of Christ and we can understand these spiritual truths. That's what it says just before it says we have the mind of Christ. I said, what changes between Isaiah 55 and 1 Corinthians 2? This event that we call Jesus happened in the midst of that. And I have this such a high value on what Christ has done. And right. so you and I have done even done a teaching around why Christ had to die to make the mystery 
somewhat more understandable. Mm -hmm. Do we know all ends of it? No. Do I know all ends of your story? No. Do I like we don't know those things, but relationship gives to us a place where we can share those things. So here's the apostle Paul. He has the mind of Christ and he's saying to these people, you do too. You do too. This has happened. This not will happen. It has happened. And so we talk about, oh no, I'm not sure that's the case. And that, oh man, I was out driving the other day and things came out of my mouth that really weren't from the mind of Christ. I get it. I fully get it. But this is about your character, not necessarily about some moment of poor behavior. It's about your character. And so this passage for me is so profound because it's spoken into a time where there is so much change, so much shifting, that people are so dysfunctional. They're trying to work their, their way out of it. And they've got this guy who was a Pharisee, who is now this extraordinary preacher of love and grace and bringing it into the, the brighter Christ. And they're just trying to get this thing understood. And he goes, hey, starts with Jesus, doesn't start with me. It's all built on Jesus. And it's not my mind you have. It's not my wisdom you have. It's his. And he's inviting them to start from that place of you have. And then as 1 Corinthians works its way out, we have this much longer conversation around what that looks like then inside a community. Mm. I, this is what really pulled this idea together and got me really excited today. When you were kind of going through your thoughts the other day, you said that God's love has been fully revealed to us in this conversation that um, we're really knowing God through this love. And that is the reason that Jesus came. And when we look at Paul speaking to this community and stripping away all things, like couldn't be more clear that he's speaking as plainly as he can to let them know that this revelation, this mystery has come. And he even uses that word of mystery. The mystery has come and the mystery is Jesus. I love even going back a little more to 1 Corinthians 1. Hold on for a second. He says to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God in the wisdom of God. Then we, when we go to chapter 2, He's talking about this wisdom, like you were just talking and sharing. And he's making sure they know this isn't, this is so clear and concise that that wisdom is Jesus. Jesus is the wisdom and power of God. And that mystery, that, that wisdom is coming into is Jesus. And he says, when I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use any lofty words, impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. I'm going to come back to that because I want, I think this will take us down an exciting path today. At least it did for me. Um, I'm going to skip down to verse five. He said, I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God, the secret plan. This is my translation. These words are a lot different in the Greek, but um, the secret plan that it's talking about. Oh yeah. No, I scroll down to this. Let me stop and go further to seven. The wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God, his plan that was previously hidden, even though he made it our ultimate glory before the world began. I think this was that link to that story you were talking about. We don't know the whole story, but God has known the whole story and he's revealing it. That doesn't necessarily make it a mystery, but this invitation. So when we go back to the secret plan that, that the New Living Translation is saying in verse one, chapter two, it's actually the Greek word that scholars, I'm going to read this article, scholars can't agree on what the actual word is there. So uh, I'm reading this off of Text and Canon Institute, the Phoenix Seminary. Uh, this is an article online and it says, one of the places in the New Testament where scholars debate a reading is in 1 Corinthians 2.1. You can see in the footnote of your own Bible that scholars are not sure whether Paul wrote testimony or mystery. So you can read different translations because in the Greek, the word is very, it looks very similar. Um, Mark, did I write down the Greek name? Your Greek I did. Where is it? Mysterion, that's the word for mystery or the word for testimony is that martri, martrorion. <laughs> anyway, they look very similar too. So you will see it translated in both senses, but argue, arguably it changes 
the idea of what Paul is saying. But I guess I sat in this place of, does it really change it? Because Jesus is the testimony of God. He's that witness, the word, word for testimony means witness as well, of who God is, what God is all about in this love. But it's also God's mystery. It's also God's secret plan. It's also God's wisdom. It's also his story. Mm -hmm. And then that just takes me back to when you get to know a person, it gets way less mysterious. Mm -hmm. It gets becomes understood. And this is tied so directly to the place of loving others as Christ has loved you and learning to love yourself. In my world, those who love me well are invited into the mystery of my story. So it's way less mysterious when they do. They get to discover what I believe, how I react and how I respond. They get to see how I do relationship. They get to see how I do forgiveness or grace. Uh, they get to see how I do failure and mistake. At the heart of that is true true love, true relationship. And I think for the longest time, Jess, we haven't been taught how to hear God or know God. We've taught a bit, been taught about God. And so it stays in the place of mystery because the only part of his story that we get to read is something that's recorded in the Bible. And often we're told then what that means rather than allowing ourselves to be curious about what that could mean. You know, Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 <laughs> For me, this is this is the mystery. This is where it is. Mm -hmm. He says, I want you to understand the love of God, even though you will never be able to understand the magnitude of the height, the width, the length, the breadth of it. But he want he goes, I want you to understand it. Love is the most beautiful mystery that we can, we have. When you discover that somebody actually loves you, like cares for you, um, is okay with your faults and and all the mistakes that you make and has found a place of relationship that is above all of those things, that's a place of wonder. And for many of us, we've not lived there before. For many of us, we don't even know what that is in relationship because we're so scared that we're going to be rejected or that we're so scared that if I say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, um, then I will be uh, tossed out. And for me, that's literally my story. And so for me to learn to love myself well, to learn others to love others well to be safe in a place where i can go hey i've really screwed up can you just can you just hear my part of a story and just forgive me for what i've done um very easy to say that in theory very difficult to do that in practice but when you find people that you can do that with that's freedom that's strength, that's courage, that's all of those things entwined into one beautiful mystery. And so when people say, how did you get your, that marriage? How did you get that friendship? How did you get that relationship? Well, it wasn't a magic wand. It wasn't just by saying some promises at the front of a church. It wasn't just say by saying, hey, Jess, will you be my friend? It's about doing life in the space of what does motivate what does interest what does all of those things inside of ourselves it becomes way less mysterious but then it drives you even further to understand more to discover more and there'll be times where you go hey you didn't you've never told me that man and i'm like oh that's a key part of my story and here here it is i'm releasing that place of the mystery and for me that's why i love the the metaphor of jesus tearing the curtain the temple mm -hmm. and allowing us to the holy of holies i say that to people all the time um you're allowing me behind the curtain i've allowed you behind the curtain and metaphorically i'm just allowing you to see i'm inviting you to love me well and again it's a risk it's an absolute risk when you step into those places, particularly if hurt or disappointment has met you many times in that space. And so when you say it's a mystery, it's a testimony, it's a witness, what is it? Well, it's the beautiful story of God that he has allowed us into and through Jesus. So he has given us the full revelation of his love through Jesus. But my whole life is now lived in the unpacking of what the full revelation actually looks like. And I'm learning and I'm growing. I don't know it all, but he has fully expressed his love. And now my heart is to fully express his love, my love 
to others as well and to be in that place where I can love as I have been loved. Does that fit with your, our testimony, witness, uh, mystery? Mm -hmm. I, really, I really like it because I, as I was <laughs> throwing back some comments too, I was really struggling in that place where what's gotten in the way of that love, that mysterious love, it are those places where I don't know the plans he has for me and I really want to know. <laughs> So when I reach for that and I can't see the full picture, what that's telling me or informing me is you must not love me. Or there's this place of ooh, trust that enters into that conversation of this great love that gets really hard to sit in. That mystery suddenly feels so big and actually it becomes a louder voice in my story than the voice of love. That's just an invitation to continue to walk with him every day. Mm. So as I'm sitting uh, in the woods, I was hiking with my daughter this past week. And I was really just kind of going into that place of like, God, are you mysterious? Are your plans mysterious? Because I think that's one thing you said. I said, yeah, he conceals things for me. That's mysterious. And you're like, is it? I was like, oh, challenged. Let me see. And as I was sitting, uh, I told you this a little bit, but while you're hiking, and you're supposed to be present out in nature, like you are. We we're fully hiking in in this really beautiful forest, really snowy for hours and hours. And a lot of things come to life for you. You're aware of many things around you. It's really beautiful. But part of the exercise was to sit and be completely present in nature and see what happens. So we invite these younger kids, these kids we're with to do that three minutes of silence, which is really hard for them to do. For us grown-ups, we're just happy to sit down and like, breathe for a minute. <laughs> so we close our eyes and we're listening. All of a sudden, I can hear things that weren't there before, a couple minutes before this. I can hear wind through the trees and I'm listening to the sound that makes. And all of a sudden, I'm just more aware of things that I wasn't aware of when I was just walking. And I really felt like this invitation to this place of mystery with God of like kind of some those plans that I might not have the full picture of might not necessarily be this concealing because he wants to keep it mysterious and hidden for me to antagonize me every day. I was just like, I don't know what the right, right word is just driving me crazy, but it's like almost that wrestle that I go through causes me sometimes to get off the track, to sit and listen or look for him in different ways, because what I'm doing isn't necessarily, I'm not finding the answers. I'm not getting to that place, to that depth that I want to. And suddenly something shifts and my awareness shifts and I'm listening and looking different. And now he can speak to me in a different way and that relationship grows, if that makes sense. So it was like him, I think, just paralleling that with what I was experiencing in the woods, like those seasons that you think of this, these great mysteries that I'm not giving to. You. There's so much more to what's, what is get being given to you. Uh, that's really important. And when I look back at my life, like I did in this, in my book, looking back, I can see where those mysteries were becoming made clear in the growth, the transformation, the character, my story, who I am, my identity was being formed and our relationship was being strengthened. And I got to see different pieces of him that I couldn't have gotten in any other way. Maybe I could have. And anyway, that's a whole different theological conundrum, but this was the way in which uh, I got to know more of him in these different seasons. I don't have any other thoughts beyond that. <laughs> I'll toss it back <laughs> to the mystic. See how you wind that up, wind that together. <laughs> the mystery. Well, I think too, like even experiences like you've had to have with your daughter, with, with Charlotte, like it's it's a beautiful moment of mother daughter and what you before you went away on it you had no idea what that was going to look like what it was going to feel like or what would be revealed in it or anything like that and i think that's the beautiful wonder of expectant expectancy in a relationship that is often called a mystery now when you're out there it's like an invitation into now years ago for me that wouldn't have been a thing i wouldn't have gone to find god in creation i would have gone to church to find him in 
the scriptures or find him in um, the teachings that are there. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but you're stepping out into a place where there is awe and there's wonder around you. You spoke about a forest that's snowy and all of us who are listening are putting that into our minds and us in Australia, that's a rare thing. You have to go to only one part of Australia or a couple of parts of Australia to actually see that sort of stuff happen for you. It's in your back, back backyard, not today, but it's in that space. But you gave to us an understanding of the awe and then you gave to us an understanding of the peace and the silence of the waiting and then the revelation there's permission in all of that that draws us into a place of going, okay, this is a real deal. This is a thing that we can find God in these places and understand him in greater ways than maybe we have seen before. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because when you say something like, and I love this scripture that you use a lot, but when you say we have the mind of Christ, I think that is a place of mystery in itself. What does that actually mean? <laughs> but if you look, I was sitting in um, what Paul's saying in chapter two here again, verse 10, he says um, about that. I'm going to read my translation. He's talking about how God, the spirit in us is showing us God's deep secrets. That's a new living translation. But in the Greek, it says, that the spirit is showing even the depths of God. I loved this idea of the depths of God. Like there are depths to God and we have been given access to that. So when we're putting on, when we're saying in this idea of having the mind of Christ, I think it is about this permission to access those depths, that oneness that Christ has with the father. It's this, place this invitation to deeper and I guess that's kind of what I experienced so how do we make that more tangible how do we make that more relatable as we're trying to understand that for me it just happened out in creation in the woods I just was looking I was asking I was seeking those the depths like Lord show me are you mysterious what does that look like and right there where I'm sitting in the middle of nowhere God is speaking and I'm experiencing that's the mind of Christ, that mutual mind. And uh, there's this great teaching by Jim Wilder and some of his colleagues where he talks about the Greek word poema. And it's where we get, you are God's masterpiece. And, but the word is poema for masterpiece. And that's where we get the word poem as well. But this idea of poetry, we are God's poema, his poetry. The, I think he says, Jim teaches that it's not in the same sense of word rhyming that we think of so often with poetry, it's thought rhyming. It's our ability to thought rhyme with God. So how are we thought rhyming with God? Because we've been given access to the mind of Christ. I think that makes you the mystic. That's what they keep telling me, Matt. <laughs> well, mystic and nerd. It works. It's interchangeable. It is. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's listening and they're thinking to themselves, I've never thought about this question before. What, what kind of other invitation do you think is there to sit and ponder on this topic? Is God mysterious? I think for me, it's just going, he's not out of reach. He's not uh, incomprehensible. That is a thought bubble for me that helped me break away from the place of, yeah, God is a mystery. That meme the other day, it kind of hit me between the eyes to go, that's true. Like what relationships have I called mysterious in my past that I'm still actually in connection with? And it's just like none Mm. why because you get tired of the mystery like just tell me how it is mm. tell me how you feel tell me how how you're responding or reacting into a place and it's like i know it's a meme can god speak through instagram <laughs> yes um <laughs> 
probably a mystery in itself. But um, but inside of that, for me, it was just like, that is so true. So how about we start articulating and putting proper conversations around how? And so you've just explained how. Like last Monday, Trish and I were on the beach. And it was a beautiful uh, overcast day. When I say beautiful and overcast, the day before it was like, over 100 degrees it was hot and a million people were on the beach the next day it's much cooler and there's no one on the beach so Trish and I are just walking along the beach in those places for me are where I find God my thoughts slow down things start to make sense that made no sense before to me because I'm taking the time to connect to get my feet into the sand and to start feeling the the creation that's around me it's literally that's my god space that's that's my happy space as people will say allowing yourself to get curious about those locations that make you happy or bring joy into your world or bring peace into your spirit allow yourself to be regularly in those places and then ask bigger questions allow your mind to be present what are the questions it's asking Bring them into the communities that you're actually sitting with and see whether they're willing to host the questions that you're sitting in your spirit. When you find people who are willing to host those questions with you, you're discovering your people. Well, what I'm getting out of today as we end, it's almost like there's two definitions of mysterious because in one way, it's, it's mysterious in the way God can answer prayers like that, because suddenly you just say, God, I, I, I'm see you're seeking in the way he'll respond and bring people into your life at the right time or through a, a meme or a, something you see on social media. Like there's a mystery to how God does what he does. And that's the beautiful mystery that gets me excited about God. But there definitely have been times where that mystery, I think, became something that distanced me, that became a really challenging space where I thought I just couldn't figure out God and there was some negative, um, maybe wounding there too. How do we distinguish those two things? I don't know if I can end this conversation until I'm satisfied. <laughs> but isn't that the joy of friendship and relationship? where does it finish? Mm. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. The more you get to know somebody, the more you want to be with that somebody and you're drawn to that somebody. It's it's a beautiful part of the, of the way we do relationship and connection. And in the drawing too is the discovery of. Like Trisha and I got to spend two weeks hanging out with your family. And so it wasn't just you that we got to understand. It wasn't just Trev that we got to understand. It's four beautiful humans that live under the same roof that we would be greeted by uniquely in the mornings. What does that do? It shows us the character of, of each child and allows us to understand how those children interact with us or interact with others, how they do friendship, how they do relationship. And so much of the mystery of who is child number one, two, three, four is not just I've got four kids. It's each one has got a, a beautiful and unique name. Each one has a beautiful and unique character and they're all growing and there's more for them to understand. And they've allowed us into the world and wanted to actually help uh, encourage that to become something more than what is. Yes, it's a mystery, but that's what love does. Love will do what knowledge cannot. Love will take us to where uh, our knowledge stops short where our assumptions stop short, where our ex expectations stop short. That's why in Ephesians where it says beyond what you can hope, dream, think, or imagine, is the, that's what God is doing. Isn't that the way that we should be describing the relationships of those that we love? But instead we use, we use it in our own way to try and gain something from somebody else, but that's not what love is. Often with God, we try and use him to gain what we think we need or to think that that is the desire of our heart, but that's not the way relationship works. Relationship is a conversation, not a monologue. It draws us into that place. And again, relationship, where where are we going to be in 20 years, Jess? Are you still going to be illustrating my books in <laughs> 20 years' time? Now, you might say yes to that, but in 20 years' time, I'm pretty certain that it will be beyond what we can imagine on 
what we're both doing. Collectively, uniquely, you might be on to your 50th book by then. <laughs> I don't know. But this is the part of the wonder of it. I get to watch and witness that go from one to two to three and allow my presence and Trisha's presence and Trev's presence to become something that's actually helpful in the place of relationship and community. And we can only imagine what that might that look like. It's a mystery. I get it. But there's a lot of joy in that, knowing that there's more yet to discover and understand. I'm satisfied. I think you nailed <laughs> I think you nailed it. I think it goes back to the beginning where you said, I think mystery is an invitation to more. If there's that agitation because there's something still concealed, still feels mysterious, and that makes me feel anxious, uh, that's an invitation to stay in relationship and to move with him, with his rhythm, and learn more of myself and more of him in that place and not eject from the conversation. So good. Yeah, that's great. Ah, well, what's next? <laughs> Stay tuned. It's, it's a mystery what's next, I, I, I would say. Am I allowed to drop it like that? <laughs> like, is that a is that a good segue into thanks for hanging out with us? That was clever. That was really <laughs> good. <laughs> we, can, we can keep rolling with this one, I think. Keep things mysterious. Ah, all right. Well, thanks, everyone. We will be back again really soon with another Mystic in the Nerd. Stay tuned for a blog on this. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> Bye. Bye, man.